I, 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 I can't believe what I just saw. I can't believe what I just saw. The 76ers come back from an absolute horrid, putrid, so oh, first half, it was absolutely terrible watching the way that they played in that first quarter and second quarter. It was just absolutely incredibly terrible how bad they were. But you know what they did? They kept on fighting. They kept coming back. They kept doing their thing, and they stuck to it throughout the entire, no pun intended, process. We'll get to that in a second of all the things they had going on tonight when we return here on Locked On 76ers Postcast. You are Locked On 76ers Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Philadelphia on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for choosing Locked On Sports Philadelphia for your post-game coverage when it comes to the postcast of the 76ers beating the Miami Heat. Now they'll go on to face the New York Knicks as they have now fully earned the seventh seed. That's the NBA for you. Play 82 games, see if you're in a playoff spot. They did, and then they have to play for the right to have it. The NBA. Anyway, uh, what you saw in this game tonight, and we'll start it off as we always do with three big things. First and foremost, 12 turnovers. The 12 turnovers that you saw had the Sixers as an inability, in, inability to be able to break the zone of the Miami defense. Now, here's the thing. You knew going into this game that the Sixers were going to see a lot of zone from Miami. It would have been shouted at us, and if you follow the NBA, you know that's how they play. They were going to throw more, more zone in your face than they had seen all season, except for when you played against the Miami Heat. The Sixers are trying to dribble drive, penetration, trying to get into that lane, trying to have kickouts. And more often than not, Jimmy Butler would get his hand on it. Tyler Hero would get his hand on it. Caleb Martin would get his hand on it. Love would get his hand on it. Constantly, turnover, turnover, turnover. Gets deflected out of bounds. You try to get a hand on it, it goes out of bounds. Sixers trying to corral it, it goes out of bounds. Bad passes were forced by that Miami zone time and time again. And then guys like Joel Embiid were trying to dribble through it, and they just had simply no answers for it. And if you weren't going to hit your shots like the Sixers weren't hitting their shots, three of 18 from three in the first half, then you weren't going to beat that zone. And what I was waiting for was Buddy Heald to start hitting shots. I was waiting for Joel Embiid, who was seemed like he was relying on the perimeter game more so than anything. Threes and foul shots is what he was basing his game on tonight because he did not look anything like the guy that I saw end the season that helped the Sixers to win eight in a row to cap off the regular season and secure their at least playoff spot or play in spot in this case, but you constantly saw the Sixers trying to dribble through the zone, get into the middle of the zone in the middle of the paint. And when it started to collapse on them, they kicked it out and had turnovers. That was a huge no, no. And why just wildly out of the 76ers character for the entire season, you're talking about a team that was them in the Boston Celtics for turning the basketball over on average, the least amount in the NBA. And you mean to tell me with time to go in the first half, they had 11 turnovers already? Nine turnovers. Nine turnovers with about nine minutes to go in the second quarter. That is unforgivable. So what did they have to do? They had to rely on the perimeter game. And they weren't going to come back in this game. They weren't going to scratch and claw their way back into this game by trying to get through that zone. They were going to have to start down, uh, to knock down threes. That's the first thing. That's the first of the three big things. Number two, Nico Batum. You watch the Sixers here in Philadelphia. Kate Scott does a phenomenal job during the broadcast, and you always hear it from her. Boom, boom, Nico Batum. And there he was when the Sixers needed him most. Rising up, knocking down six threes in this game. He was six of ten from beyond the arc, and each one more important than the next. And he was the guy that absolutely guided the Sixers back to the victory and back to the winning side of things tonight. He was unconscious from three. Maxi, no bueno from three-point land. Joel Embiid, he had hit two threes and, again, had foul shots. 15, at one point, 15 of his 23 points. That's the way it ended tonight. 15 of his 23 points came from either the foul line or the three-point line. 
And that's not normally something, especially with the three-point line that you defend or really are used to seeing from Joel Embiid. Yeah, he'll he'll shoot those threes, and yeah, he'll make a couple of them. But usually a game like this, you want him going down on the boards a little bit more, but he didn't have that control. And a guy that struggles with turning the basketball over somehow miraculously in this awful turnover night, the Sixers finished with 15, four over their average on the season. Joel Embiid only had three. Kelly Oubre had four. But you watch the Sixers continue to turn the basketball over. They finally start hitting their shots with with um, Nico Batum, and you saw the ship start to get righted. Now, this is absolutely, without question, I'll admit it, Pauly pom-poms. It's a 1,000% Pauly pom-poms here. But with the Sixers trailing as bad as they were trailing in the late portions of that second quarter, I said, you know what? They're a better team than 3 for 18. They're certainly a better team than 11, 12 first half turnovers. They're certainly better than that. If they just find a way to start hitting those threes, the only thing is the Heat weren't shooting the lights out either. They had hit a little bit of a hot streak. They had about a, a minute's time where they hit three threes in a minute to really pull themselves away from the Sixers and take control. Uh, and, and the Sixers were finally able to take back control late in that third quarter and then really establish themselves in that fourth quarter. But it all started with Nico Batum being able to knock down, knock down those three-point shots. Uh, the third thing, if you ain't gotten – if you if you don't have it, you got to find somebody else that has it. And Joel Embiid, although if you look just at the box score, you say, oh, well, what do you know? He led the team in scoring. Yeah, that's a farce. Uh, he He wasn't their best player on the floor tonight. He was not 100% tonight. I don't even know if he was 80% tonight. That's that's not an excuse by any means. If you don't have it, maybe don't put the basketball on the floor so often and try to dribble through three guys in order to get to the rim, even if you are trying to go for contact, get to the foul line, and do your thing that a lot of people criticize you for, which is go uh, foul hunting, essentially. The turnovers in this game were far too crucial, far too critical. You got to stop doing that. You got to knock that out. Kelly Oubre did what he has been doing for the Sixers team for the last two months. He provided a spark. Nico Batum, by far and away, the reason the Sixers won this game. But the reason I think they closed this game out was because Al Kelly Oubre played around the rim. One of those, one of the great finishes he had was on a wonderful feed from Embiid from the top of the key down to the boards, and you had Oubre go up and get the hoop and the harm, and he converted the end one opportunity there for the Sixers. But, man... There are points that you watch this team, and, and Kelly Oubre does provide that spark, especially when it comes to closing out games. And again, you look at the box score for a game like Kelly Oubre, you go, 11 points. That's that's not a lot. They're clutch. Each one more clutch than the next. He didn't provide the three-point shot. When he went to the foul line on the rare occasion, the five uh, foul shots that he got tonight, he hit all five of them. And the way the Sixers closed out the game, a lot of it had to do with Kelly Oubre. After that, Tyrese Maxey. And along the way, one thing that kind of went under the radar tonight, Joel Embiid's rebounding and second half points were a huge issue for the Sixers to try to stop the Heat from getting second chance points. And there was a run we'll go over a little bit later that they were able to put together that started to have them take control back of the game late in that fourth quarter, or midway through the fourth quarter, I should say. But Joel Embiid just kept on hammering the boards on the defensive glass to make sure he got those possessions for the Sixers and were able to corral those rebounds. Now, in total, he walked away with 12 defensive boards, 15 overall. And when you're going up against a guy like Bam out of Bayou, uh, Bam out of Bayou, who came up with 12 boards of his own, you know it's going to be a battle each and every time. Uh, so those are the three things I look at. Oubre finishing, Embiid's play along the way in the turnovers, and Nico Batum, above all, how great he played in the clutch situation. At one point, it was just get the ball to Batum. Get the ball to Batum. That's all you got to do. Just give the ball to him and get out of the way. That's all the Sixers had to do at one point, and he made sure to convert those threes. Uh, but, boy, it was ugly. It was horrendous. And I'm on text chains just like you guys are with your friends. And you guys are texting about how terrible this is. I'm looking at the turnovers. I'm looking at the three-point shooting. I'm looking at Joella Bede looking slow as hell. And then just a voice in the back of my head. The Sixers shoot better than 15% from three and don't give the Heat opportunities to score as much as they did in that first half. And it's going to be a different story. And what happened? You cut down on your turnovers significantly, and then you started hitting your outside shots. That's what changed in this game. I, look, I would love to say that there was something that Nick Nurse did to wa wave a magic wand. 
the Sixers weren't getting any shots from the outside. Once they started hitting those shots, all of a sudden everything looks great. They were aggressive. That's another thing that, that was great. They weren't deterred. And a lot of times you can get deterred, but they stayed aggressive. Kelly Oubre stayed aggressive. There was one instance where I wish Kyle Lowry was actually a little bit more aggressive. There was some awful foul calls, both sides. Both sides missed uh, some good foul calls that were taken away, that were not called there by the officiating crew. So it kind of went both ways as far as the officiating went. Some more uh, egregious than the, than, the, than the last. But when you look at the way the Sixers just kept on fighting throughout this game, you knew going up against Miami. And I said this going into the series. I said this after the last regular season game we did. You knew going up against the Miami Heat, it was going to be a battle. You knew they were going to throw everything they possibly could against you. Jimmy Butler had only played in one in one of the four games against the Sixers. Joel Embiid had only played one of the three, one of the four games against the Heat. That was the game that they actually played against each other in one of Joel Embiid's return games as he was ramping up for postseason play. Tyler Hero only played in one game prior to tonight, so he was a missing factor as well, especially with his three point shooting and totally dropped twenty five to actually lead the Heat. And dropped uh, four of 14. Not great. Not great for him. Four of 14 from beyond the arc. But there are also a number of situations when the Sixers and the Heat met back, back on April 4th, I think it was. The Heat had a, a number of opportunities, wide open shots, breakdowns defensively with the Sixers, and they did not convert those shots. There are a lot of instances, more, than, more often than not, where the Heat were not able to convert those shots tonight. Sixers were the team to be able to weather the storm as ugly and as horrendous as it was and find somebody to help them win. And you know what Nico Batum, Batum is? He is the perfect example of why I think this Sixers team is the best they have been since Jimmy Butler was wearing a Sixers uniform and J.J. Redick wasn't holding a microphone but wearing a Sixers jersey. Wasn't wearing a tie, but a Sixers jersey in the year they got bounced out of the playoffs on the quadruple doink by Kawhi Leonard. So we'll break that down. Why is this team better than that team? Or why is that team the best since the Jimmy Butler-led 76ers team? And Nico Batum is a shining example of that. You are watching Locked On Sports Philadelphia, the Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. And this is a 76ers postcast. We'll break it down again in a second. Oh, how much do you love your Nissan? You have a Nissan? How great is your Nissan? I love my Nissan. Personally, it's fantastic. And if you're the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further, ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, you need to shop NissanUSA.com. All our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs that uh, has amazing capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Like the 2024 Nissan Rogue, perfect for city drives or great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant and Google Maps and Google Play Store are built right into your over 12-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue, the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. And how about my personal favorite here, the 2024 Nissan Armada. Oh, this thing is amazing. Uh, this will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that could seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Toe bigger, explore further with a 2024 Nissan Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder also, or Nissan Armada, and you can go find your next big adventure. Shop Nissan USA today. And let's not forget about the amazing people at Monopoly Go. Have you seen this yet? You might get a little competitive with it. I certainly do. A little eye of the tiger for you when it comes to the game of Monopoly. It increases tenfold when you're talking about Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard about it by now. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on uh, Monopoly when you play not one, but on a hundred, hundreds of boards. Monopoly boards, that is, in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big time money. But the best part, messing with your overly competitive friends, of course. For instance, uh, I could charge them rent on the iconic properties and uh, just uh, like you do on classic Monopoly. But now I can also rob their vaults from riches for myself. And the leaderboard shows me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. And as of right now, I'm in second place. My buddy Bennett's in first. Anyway, uh, now it's time to talk about competitive side of things. 
That's what Monopoly brings out of you. You can team up with your friends also, people around the world in timed tournaments and earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play Store as well. Also, let's not forget about tonight. Uh, football fans, don't forget Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live going on tonight. Streaming on Locked On Sports today, 24-7, and streaming channel on YouTube and free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the Ultimate Six episode series beginning tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time, 7 p.m. Eastern time, to hear uh, who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise. So don't miss out on all that action for all you football fans. The problem the 76ers had with the Jimmy Butler-led team uh, the, with the uh, JJ Redick and Ben Simmons and the, the 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 first run of Tobias Harris and Boban Marjanovic also with the 76ers. You know what it was? You know what they didn't have? Depth. Hardly any depth. You know what the Sixers showed tonight? You know what Nico Batum gave you tonight? He gave you a whole hell of a lot of depth. If you look at your starters tonight, there was a run in the first quarter, a run in the second quarter, a run in the third quarter where Tobias Harris couldn't make a layup. Three tippins, four tippins, couldn't even hit a layup. You look at the way that Ubre struggled in the early goings of the game and then eventually got it going. Tyrese Maxey was just one for six from beyond the arc tonight. He struggled mightily, just 19 points for Tyrese Maxey and also six of 16 from the floor. You needed a spark off the bench. And what did you get? If you tell me that Buddy Heald provided a spark off the bench, then I am telling you that he had another three threes in, one, in 51 seconds like he had in the, in the regular season finale. But that's not what he did tonight. He hit you one three. He was one for five from beyond the arc. He only had seven points in the game. The thing that is mind-blowing with Buddy Heald is the fact that he had six assists tonight. That ain't his game, man. But what did I say about the first half? Sixers are trying to get that drive. Sixers are trying to get those kickouts when the zone started to collapse on them as they started to get into the paint, get closer to the basket, get closer to the semicircle. That would collapse on them, and you'd get kickouts. When the Sixers would very rarely, especially in the third and fourth quarter, catch the heat, making that shift from left to right, right to left, whenever they caught them off balance a little bit, Buddy Heald, Penetrated the lane, had a kick out to Nico Batum more often than not, and he knocked it down. You have Buddy Heald going off in the assist game? That's not a thing. That's not a thing. If you watch the game during the broadcast, you're listening to Doris Burke and J.J. Reddick talk about how, well, this isn't part of Buddy Heald's game as far as him really getting to the basket, and he did. He had his fair share of getting to the basket tonight as well and finishing at the basket, but what he did more than anything was make the drive and the and the the aggression towards the basket, and then he had guys open on the perimeter to knock down threes, whether that be Tyrese Maxey, whether that be Joel Embiid, or whether that be Nico Batum in the corner or on the foul line extended on the perimeter. That was something that the Sixers did not have in their best year since the process ended and the winning actually, the attempts at winning actually started since the Jimmy Butler led Sixers team. Depth was the missing piece on that team. Depth. And maybe one more bounce and Kawhi Leonard doesn't make that shot. Those two things, depth and one more bounce for Kawhi Leonard. Maybe we're talking about a Sixers team that actually makes it to the NBA finals that year. But this time around, looking at the Sixers and how deep they are, campaign came in, hit a big three for you uh, in a clutch moment. His only points of the game. Paul Reed had an alley oop from Buddy Heald of all people for one of his assists to finish it off. This was a huge spark for the 76ers. It's exactly what you needed from them to be able to win this game, take a day, and then they'll be able to get back at it. Actually, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They're back at it Saturday against the Knicks, the two seed in the Eastern Conference. I did not, I look, I didn't expect the Sixers to play as bad as they did in the first half. I didn't expect that to happen again in the second half. There were some moments where they were certainly flirting with that kind of play again, but they were to bounce out of it and put their best foot forward to overcome such a horrendous first half. Before I uh, get into our next break here, I want to hit some people here in our chat here. Much appreciated. Uh, first quarter. <laughs> what the have? Eight Batum in? <laughs> what a game. He's pretty awesome. Does Batum start over Tobias on Saturday? I would, as my 
hand squeaks across the table. Yes, I would. But then again, do you kind of like that spark off the bench? I kind of like that spark off the bench. And, you know, say what you will about Tobias Harris. You needed every one of the rebounds that you got. And there was one specific play, Crazy, and thanks for thanks for uh, chiming in. There was one, one thing here. Tobias Harris, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, and I believe two of those were air balls. Two of them were air balls. Uh, four from 10 from the floor. Uh, I think four or three of those were just on tip-ins that he couldn't convert. But those 10 rebounds, again, were huge. Just like Joel Embiid pulling down 15 boards, him and Toby combining for 25 rebounds, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But there were a number of occasions there where they just started getting second chance points. And in that fourth quarter in particular, here's the situation. Uh, Reed gets the oop from Buddy Heald. Sixers are up now at this point, 84 to 80. Uh, then the next thing that happens is Maxi gets a driving layups, 86, 82. Hero hits a three, makes it 86, 85. Uh, and then, uh, Hawkes comes in there with the driving dunk on a second chance point. Uh, he makes it in that situation, uh, 87, 86. And then Hero gets a floater on a second chance point, makes it 89, 86. So you go 87 to 86, then 89 to 86 based on back-to-back second-chance buckets for the Heat. That was a point where I just thought, uh, this is where the Sixers blow it. And then what happened to make you just feel so much better? Tobias Harris airballed a three. Good times. Good times. But after that point, the Sixers just owned the game. And Nico Batum, time and time again, just kept hitting threes. Um Absolutely bonkers, absolutely wild. Uh, Ari, congrats. Thank you. Ari's a St. Louis guy. Thank you, Ari. Appreciate it. Step one, check. <laughs> yeah, right. Play one in the play. Just play one. Just play one. Just play one. Play one play in game, not two. Get a day here. You know what I'm saying? Take a break. Like two to three feet. You mean Tobias Harris? Yeah, it's pretty awful. Um, yeah, crazy. You're locked on. Yeah, there you go. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about why that depth is so great a little bit more and really pinpoint one of the big turning points in the game that maybe, just maybe, it got Nico Batum and the rest of the pack going. Talk about it in a second here. You're locked on Sports Philadelphia, locked on 76ers postcast. Uh, you guys heard me talking about eBay Motors and how fantastic eBay Motors is. Oh, passion. Drive. Patience? Yeah. eBay Motors. Patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps the ride or die in you alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof, raft, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more with eBay Motors. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, or maybe all of the above, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Motors. And how about this? Uh, eBay guaranteed fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at all the prices that you want. It's easy to make your car, excuse me, easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Let's break this down. I really want to go through this because it was insane, absolutely insane. So the score is 59 to 48. Caleb Martin, and if you're watching the game and you're not a Sixers fan, okay, if you're watching the game just because you like the uh, the playoffs, right, or the play-in tournament for some reason, uh, Caleb Martin goes to the line for the uh, Miami Heat. He misses both free throws. And in case you don't know this, the Sixers get free ch Sixers fans, not the Sixers, that would be funny. They just serve them free chicken nuggets on the bench. But uh, the Sixers fans, when the opposing team misses consecutive free throws in the second half, Sixers fans get free chicken. They get a coupon for free chicken. So what ends up happening here? Uh, Caleb Martin goes to the free throw line. 
misses two free throws. The score at the time was 59 to 48. So still, things not looking particularly great for the 76ers. And you're in the third quarter, and you're waiting for some kind of life to start happening with the Sixers. 59 to 48 in favor uh, of the Miami Heat. Kayla Martin goes to the line, misses both free throws. After that, the Sixers went on one hell of a run. Sixers ended up outscoring uh, the Miami Heat 21 to 13 the rest of the way. Uh, yeah. And that's when their run really started. And that was in the third quarter. There was no life. Sixers were getting booed off the court at timeouts. They were getting booed when the ball was being inbounded by the Heat after another Sixer turnover. And they were talking about it a lot on the broadcast. And you know what? That's what we do. Uh, former Eagles Super Bowl champion cornerback Ronald Darby once described the Philadelphia boo to me in the city of brotherly love as the brotherly boo. And I think that's a perfect way to say it because we don't just boo at nothing. I mean, sometimes we just have some fun with the boo. You know what I mean? But uh, like booing a dog at halftime for dropping a Frisbee, that's fun. Uh, but when it comes to the way the team is playing, the Sixers got booed off the court at halftime. Sixers got booed at a number of different times. Sixers got booed on an air ball by uh, Tobias Harris. Joel Embiid bricked the three pretty bad in a time where the Sixers were just trying to get anything going. He got booed a little bit for missing that shot. It was pretty rough and tumble down there in South Philly for a good while. Then Caleb Martin goes to the free throw line. He misses both those free throws at 6.57 remaining in the third quarter. And from that point on, Nico Batum hit his first three on an assist from uh, Buddy Heald. Then the next possession, just 24 seconds later, uh, you get Buddy Heald hitting the three. Uh, there was going to be a runner in the lane from Kelly Oubre. That was a five-point run all of a sudden before you blink. And then Buddy Heald made a three about a minute later to give the Sixers a nice little 7-0 run here. little 8-0 run, excuse me. Where they hadn't had any run going whatsoever. And the next thing you know, it's a three-point ball game. Then Bam out of Bayou gets a little uh, jump shot there. Puts the uh, the heat over the hump to 61, makes it 61 to 56. And then boom, boom, Batum again. 4.35 left to go in that third quarter. He hits another three, makes it 61-59. The Sixers just wouldn't go away. Jimmy Butler tried to put the Sixers away with a three with 4.06 left. Doesn't happen. Sixers come right back with Tyrese Maxey getting a great driving bucket. Buddy Heald hits another driving bucket. And then uh, Nicholas Batum, Nico Batum with 119 left, makes it another two-point game by the close of the third quarter. The Sixers were going on a great run. Kevin Love hit another three just before the close of the quarter, made it 71 to 69 or 71 to 66. That's when Campaign hit his three to make it 71 to 69. It's a two-point game. And he came up with another answer to at least have a five-point lead at the end of that half, or at the end of that quarter. And then the fourth quarter. Sixers outscore them in total by six, and that's all they needed. That's all they needed, including some clutch free throws as time went off the clock for the 10 9 8 70 Sixers. I'd love to say that a lot of this was coaching, but sometimes when you start hitting your outside shot, things just look a whole hell of a lot better. I'm not going to say it was uh, just the chicken, but the only and the first good vibe of the game came from the crowd getting awarded free chicken thanks to Caleb Martin. So when we're thinking about this game down the line, is this going to be the Batum game or is this going to be the free chicken game? Because the free chicken really seemed to charge the crowd, get them animated, get them pumped up and get them ready to go. I know I had it there in the, the, the side profile. So uh, you see it there, the free chicken. That's what the uh, free chicken is all about. Um There we go. Um, awesome. All right, so going forward, their matchup with the New York Knicks. Uh, yes, we can all breathe a sigh of relief for a second. They get a couple days off. It looks like Joel Embiid needs every ounce of that. According to Nick Nurse, Joel Embiid has been doing everything at practice. It has not been a huge concern of his. Um, my thing, and I've been saying this throughout the end of the season and, and now in the postseason, I'll say it again. With Joel Embiid, very rarely do I worry about an injury that happened 
at the end of the regular season. I worry more about what's going to happen in the postseason, whether it's going back to that Jimmy Butler-led team with gastroenteritis uh, or it's a broken face thanks to the shoulder of Markel Fultz all those years ago before Jimmy Butler got to town. Um, whether it's uh, the, 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 the wrist, the hand, the concussion, all the things that Joel Embiid has dealt with, uh, a meniscus tear, all the things Joel Embiid has dealt with in the playoffs. Those are the things. I'm not worried about his current injury. I am a little bit now after tonight, but I'm also more worried about every single playoff run. It seems to be something in the playoffs, not suffered before the season, not before, not suffered before the postseason, but every postseason it seems to be something new that rears its ugly head when it comes to Joel Embiid. I would like for this Sixers team to at least prove, and the only way they're going to do that is that if they get to another at least game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals and prove that they could be a better team than that Jimmy Butler-led team. It's going to be a tough road. I like them beating the Knicks. The Knicks, I got all the respect in the world for the Knicks, but I just think the Sixers are a better team. Uh, defensively speaking, the, the Knicks are not the, the heat. So that's at least one good thing there. And again, uh, speaking of the Sixers' turnovers, they don't turn the basketball over like this. One of the fewest turnover teams in the NBA. So this is the exception. It's certainly not the rule. And the only thing you do right now is hope that that stays true throughout the playoffs and throughout this series with the New York Knicks. Uh, they also have an opportunity to, to prove that with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey on the court, when they do have both those guys together, you're talking about a team with about a 76 win percentage. That's pretty good. It's pretty great. Considering the Celtics are up there too. You're talking about the number two seed in the 76ers. This could be a number two seed 76ers team masquerading as a seven seed. And all the opportunity to prove that when they go up against the Knicks in this series starting on Saturday. I can't wait for that. In the meantime, we'll be taking you through all things Philadelphia right here on the Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. My name is Mark Farzetta. Make sure you guys click like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff here on the Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. This has been a Locked On 76ers postcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. We'll be back with you guys uh, Friday, as a matter of fact, with a little Phillies postcast, and then back with you on Saturday for a 76ers postcast as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You guys are fantastic. Again, my name is Mark Farzad, and this is Locked On 76ers postcast.